put your heart, mind and soul into even your smallest acts. This is the secret of success. Good evening, respected Bala sir and the honorable chief guest. On behalf of everyone present here, now I would request Brigadier ML Bambani sir, advisor, Sri Balaji Society to introduce our guest. Good evening. Good evening sir. Having a good, good evening coming up from you all, that shows that you are still up, about and kicking. That you are all ears, all ears to hear the words of wisdom, the words of, from a person who has seen life in all its facets, from all its angles, 360 degrees. And that person is none other than Lieutenant General Venkatesh M. Patil. <laughs> now, who is General V. M. Patil? General Patil is a person who is from the same regiment as Balasa, that is, Regiment of Artillery. He got his commission in Year of the Lord 1959 in artillery and like all young artillery officers did his YO's course as we say young officers course at Devlali in the school of artillery. Continued to be in the artillery but immediately within three years of his having got his commission he had to go and fight a war 1962. Forward observation officer. That is where they go forward and direct the artillery fire. 65, same activity. Two wars he fought, kept on rising in the normal course of service. And as a good officer, all of us, all good officers, aspire to do staff college at Wellington. He also appeared for the test and the toppers are sent abroad. He was the one who was selected number one in the competition to go and do staff college in Kimberley in UK. It's a rare, rare honor and that honor <laughs> is purely because of the dint of hard work, the competitiveness and having come number one in that uh, order of merit for the test. He was selected to be the assistant chief military advisor, military observer of the United Nations to keep the two armies apart, the two fighting armies, which ones? Iran and Iraq. Now, he was a person who was a thinker. He still is a thinker, a strategizer. Therefore, the armed forces recognized his acumen in that respect. And he became director of military operations from 91 to 93. And this is our very own Lieutenant General Patil Sahib. Sir, may I now request you to kindly enlighten me. Thank you, friends. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Respected Bala, sir, my friend Brigadier Bhambani, distinguished faculty, and the student managers of the present course. It is indeed a privilege, honor for me to be back home, I call it, and be with you all. You, the student managers of this batch, and your colleagues before and coming after, 
are extremely fortunate to be in our country as the future leaders for the reason that what India is going to become, the process already started, depends entirely on how you shape the events. Towards this end, ladies and gentlemen, India is destined to shape the events of the 21st century. Because, as you see in the map, between Asia and Africa and in Indian Ocean, India geographically forms a center of gravity. What India does within and without will have the ocean waves ruffled and the rest of the world looking at you. How and why I will come up gradually. We are extremely fortunate, when I say we, 125 crore Indians, be part of a 5000 years old civilization which has survived many onslaughts from 3rd century. We were suppressed by Arab invaders for 700 years and exploited by the imperial power for 150 years. And yet, we have remained one. The most diverse country in the world with all the major eight religions coexisting, expressing themselves in 25 major languages and chatting or communicating in 1,562 dialects. Nowhere in the world you come across such a diverse demography coexisting. We have our shortcomings, but we also got our strength. Somehow, some of the Macaulay educated educa uh, historians have conveyed in the last 70 years that India became independent and a nation in 1947. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a myth and misnomer. Believe you me, India has been in existence for more than 5000 years. The idea of Bharatvarsh existed then, flourishing now, and it will decide the future of the Asia Pacific and this planet in the coming years. Primarily because this is the country wherein what our ancestors have taught us on the values of life, on our role in the life and what we do for the society held good in the past and holds good now and will hold good in future. I had the privilege of the first Indian defense advisor in Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. And in Cambodia, the King Kambos from Kalinga established the empire, married the local princess and built Angkor Wat temple with the longest parikrama in the world and that is the only temple in the world wherein Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, all three are in one dome. Similarly, Bangkok full of temples of Rama. Vietnam, a communist country, in the heart of Vietnam center, there is the temple of Lakshmi and in Hanoi there is the temple of Vishnu. My purpose of telling all this is that India has influenced rest of the world, most of it in Asia, by sheer use of soft power and not military power.
balance of power is a thing a dynamic one which keeps shifting from region to region and the balance of power is determined by your political economy science and technology industrial capacity and military power in 18th and 19th century the imperial powers which controlled one third of the world after the industrial revolution decided the fate of the world for over 150 years germany's rise and two world wars in the 20th century destroyed the imperialism completely that's how overnight in 3 years time from 47 to 50 62 nations became independent out of the colonial power thus 18th century and 19th century belong to imperial power 20th century belong to us led western alliance what they called as free world or the capitalist world vis-a-vis -vis ussr led communist bloc 45 years of cold war and we are the only nation led the non aligned thing between the two but this ussr communist empire was dismantled without firing a shot by sheer use of technology economic power and what they call prehistorica in 1990 the dismantling of the ussr power and emergence of unipolar world coincided with india shelling its license permit raj and adopting free economy and that was 20th century now in the 21st century where you are in the second decade ladies and gentlemen the power of the balance of power has shifted from west to east today four powers determine the 21st century us china india and japan largest economies and of these four three are in asia therefore i come to my favorite theme wherever i've gone and address the youth like you is 21st century belongs to india and china whether the world likes it or not and it is for us it is for us to take india towards that uh, dream but mere saying that we will decide the future of 21st century is not enough we must understand what are our challenges and what are our strategic disadvantages and how do we overcome them in order to emerge prosperous the cyber threat all of you are going to be victims of that because one has become so much i call slavish for lack of better word to your laptop mobile whatsapp and facebook how you will be brainwashed how you will be contacted how you will be carried away by the cyber threat only you can realize once you become the victim in my subsequent talk i'm going to share this with you use this technology but don't be its slave now recently you heard ransomware which had almost immobilized our banking system in the month of beginning of june for 72 hours now what 
threat cyber can pose nobody can predict the global powers are not ready including united states china and us and europe how to tackle isis threat and how to manage cyber threat ladies and gentlemen there is neither clarity nor strategy nor policy we are literally shadow boxing and living from one crisis to another crisis but mark my word if the cyber threat achieves the next step it will not be difficult for a lone man with a laptop or an identical appliance which may be under development sit in a isolated island in any ocean and immobilize the complete communication system of the or flying aircrafts without the knowledge of anyone this is very much the cyber threat on the card we have to open our vision and knowledge in countering this the greatest challenge the humanity is going to face if you have read it well and good otherwise it is in our library samuel huntington's clash of civilization book written in 1993 what does the corporate world expect from you when you leave balaji society and join them many eminent speakers for the next 3 weeks and thereafter will be telling you on that i will focus on few crunch issues which i have experienced in my life in the corporate world corporates don't hire employees or job seekers make no mistake about it corporates hire partners in their growth who are committed to the vision of the company you are joining in therefore my first request to all of you don't try to be an employee or a job seeker in a corporate house join it as a partner of growth contributing to the values of that company when you enter the corporate world they have enough radars to keep a check on you and scan your activities and in no time they can find out are you a performer with commitment or a passenger with convenience or a jumping jack only looking for career if you do not belong to the first category your days in that corporate world are numbered therefore join as a professional that brings me to the next piece of suggestion or request or advice you take it any fashion be a passionate professional irrespective of which line you take marketing hr business finance anything be a passionate professional and not a career oriented employee because once you are a passionate professional you can integrate and get into any organization people will welcome you now there since i had the privilege of uh, being with bala sir and your organization bimm i will touch on few issues very few on marketing and sales because for 3 years i had the occasion to learn that in this institute and what i have seen after learning here outside i'll share with you take them for whatever they are worth much more comprehensively on that you will hear from the actual practitioners from the corporate world you can be top marketing by many tools many books and many teachers but sales is an art it is a craft marketing man can go into sales but very few sales people would like to go to, sorry other way around sales people would 
can go into marketing but marketing people getting adjusted to sales is few because sales you have to achieve three things not just selling product you have to understand the customers goals problems and needs and make him understand that for your product you are not going to sell your product you are going to make the customer buy your product at a price quoted by you but the connected services that you offer with that by walking an extra mile you build a trust with him and with the customer you have to establish a lifelong relationship based on trust and your professional commitment that's what corporate world wants it from the marketing and sales people and to do that you got to have certain basic qualities as a human being i come to that not as a marketing man but as a human being you must win the trust of your customer from day one and sustain it for the rest of your life then only customer remains to you and to win the trust of that man you got to be honest to yourself professionally and transparent at the working level mark the word transparency is at the working level not at the policy making level at the working level you have to ensure you are transparent you are honest and your word is respected in other words don't bluff it is always better to tell your customer or anyone who can talk come in contact in your marketing well if you are not sure of it i will check up and come back to you is a better answer than bluff your way and once he finds out you bluff your credibility is gone and thereafter you can never be a successful corporate man so my appeal to all of you irrespective of what stakeholders you are dealing in your corporate life never bluff never lie your trust credibility and reliability are the weapons through which you are going to succeed in your corporate life you will have more on it from many experts i will not touch but these are the basic human requirements and those who do not follow have fallen by the wayside eating the dust number of corporate houses falling wayside or getting merged because their sales and marketing have not been based on principles of trust and honesty and credibility now in order to succeed in the corporate life that is your profession and in order also to become a good human being succeed when i say succeed means live a life full as an individual both men and women you got to have certain basics in you all through your life and irrespective where you are what you are you have stakeholders in the corporate life and your stakeholders in the family life in the corporate world you ensure wealth is created for the benefit of all by fair means for the stakeholders in the family life everybody around you who is dependent on you remains happy contented and look to you as almighty towards that end i'll come to my last part is you are the architect of your own life nobody is going to shape your life you have to shape and for that purpose you must be prepared to travel the journey of your life and this journey will have ups and downs like a sine curve those of you who are engineering students or those who have learned geometry will know what is sine curve there is always up 
and when it is up it is down don't be excited when it is up and be very happy and brag about and don't get depressed when it is down compare it to sunrise and sunset when it is up it is sunrise once it is sunrise sunset has to come otherwise there will be no further sunrise if you maintain equanimity of yourself in both up and down you will always succeed irrespective of the challenges and you have a living example of that my guru bala sir i know him for 30 years we know him for 30 years how he struggled to bring in the symbiosis institute for students from defense services we know him from last 20 years how he has struggled to build this organization and we know what struggle he underwent yet maintained the equanimity and his stakeholders were only two you the students managers and the other the corporate houses who are going to employ you and he ensured that he was and he is and he will remain honest to the core to whatever he says and does for you as well as to the corporate house that is how that is how ladies and gentlemen you are when you pass out from this place are in demand because they know you are from balaji society you are groomed by bala sir and you will fit into that organization to successfully travel the journey of your life you got to follow what our ancestors taught us three things jnana bhakti vairagya which has been told in vedas and upanishads for that period that is applicable with modernity with amendments to today's life too jnana your knowledge never feel you have learned everything in your life while you are in sbs or thereafter be a student of jnana or knowledge all through your life you will never feel old and you will never be short of knowledge i say that i don't get me wrong i say that with personal experience the more you know more hungry you become to know more and younger you will remain in mind jnana is nothing but tickling your brain to acquire more and more don't over depend on google to tell you everything there are many things your mind can tell you what google doesn't tell and that is way to exercise your mind and brain life is worth living loving and laughing provided you know how to balance the work and life this balance is most important irrespective of that you have no holidays in balaji society there are no sundays and you have to work from monday to sunday possibly make just 4 hours uh, rest it is not to upset your work and life balance it is to groom you it is to groom you for harder life but once you join the corporate world balance yourself work in your corporate house and private life when you come home when you balance this you are happy you are contented and you will achieve all that you wish to to achieve what you wish to i am going to share with you certain things don't take it casually because in today's world it is not very apparent but with 55 years of working experience i can tell you 
it is there and that is where the people succeed in your personal traits be honest to yourself you can cheat anyone you can't cheat yourself be honest to yourself what carries you anywhere you go anywhere in any field humility humble never brag if you are humble people will come and respect you and you will have the world at your feet always have sense of humor not to laugh at others but to laugh at your own self even 24 by 7 routine of balaji society ladies and gentlemen i advise you to laugh at yourself loud laughter for 5 minutes in a day you find how much clarity you get in your lungs and in your mind health personal health is the most important thing and it comes by regular regime you need physical health mental health and spiritual health and all the three combined make you remain healthy you will never feel tired work has never killed anyone i don't get me wrong because only recently i entered my 80th year and i have been working from my age of 21 only thing is i have i have paced my work what i used to do when i was a 50 or 60 i am not doing it now i don't have to do it but i still do what my body and mind can take work has never killed anyone you have four phases of life on which you have no control except the professional life childhood your parents decide education your institutions decide and once you start working after you leave balaji society till you retire you decide after you retire you are in the departure lounge when the call comes from the god almighty you leave this world but all these four phases you can remain happy provided you know what you are that brings me to the next thing you are the only one to know what you are and particularly when you are in depression when things not going your way in prospect and any time you get hurt in the life not physical i'm talking mental work wise introspect the life has a lesson for you in that hurting and whenever you feel you are at the pinnacle doing very well bhagwan ek chhatka deta hai and that is with a purpose to make you come down to mother earth therefore know what you are then know what is your aim in the life and then how to achieve it you are the one to achieve no one else will tell you mind you in this world when you have money when you have power when you have uh, resources there will be many friends circling around you they are all weather friends all weather friends or weather friends but when you are in trouble when you are in distress when you are in depression the real ones remain with you that is what the lesson you have to learn and when you are in depression if you invent yourself what you are you will be able to overcome that with your own effort without anybody's holding your hand in work be a team person be a team man not a gladiator the team will respect you you will achieve the results in social life be a society person be part of that society in which you are socializing at home be a family man and you will never feel lonely anywhere you are at any stage that brings me to 
work and family. I know at present you are all young but one day you will have your own family and all of you have come out from a family. Don't carry your work to home. This is achieving work and life balance. Don't start your day with the emails, whatsapp and SMSs. Morning time is the best time when your mind is fresh. Focus on something which you want to do it yourself, not this work one. If you are a family man, you are with the parents or your own family, spend that time with them or a cup of tea or a coffee. Spend those 15-20 minutes, you will be fresh. Similarly, when you go home, don't carry laptop and mobile and certainly not on your dining table. Otherwise, today when you see in most of the serials, movies and places, people are in a beautiful hotel enjoying a drink or a meal, but each one is looking at the mobile and passing the WhatsApp and not exchanging notes. That is not life. Don't be slave to this technology that upsets you mentally and you will not be able to sleep well nor you will be happy. There are time to play, time to use your appliances but time to relax. Pacing your life, 40 to 50 percent of your life is meant for your work and profession. Focus on that. 20 to 25 percent of life is meant for relax, recreate and your family. Focus on that. First 15, 20 percent goes in your education and childhood on which you have no control. And when you have finished your work or your professional life, give something back to the society. There is always pleasure in giving back to the society. You will never feel short of anything. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned in the beginning, India is changing. The present government is determined to transform India into a progressive, prosperous and powerful nation. 19 programs have been launched towards that end. Be part of this transformation. You will be able to build a better and powerful India. And towards that end, while you will be entering the corporate world and settling down yourself to achieve your own dreams, think of and plan what you can do for the people around you, the society around you and the part of the country from which you come. You can do a lot in number of nation building activities. Those of you who get placed go to the corporate world. If some of you do not get placed, don't get discouraged. You have opportunity for self-employment. You have opportunity to be an entrepreneur. Three to four of you can get together and start something on your own. There are number of startup projects coming in the country. They are there and there will be more. You are read today or yesterday, Lockheed had signed F-16 fighter aircraft manufacturer with Tata's in India. Like this, there will be many in the defense field, manufacturing field, textile field and mineral field coming to India in the next few years. Prepare yourself. If you can't get a job, don't lose your heart. Become self-employed. There are plenty of opportunities. My mission as President of Akhil Bharatiya Purvasenik Swa Prashad is to get my ex-servicemen employed on their own in their respective states. And I'm happy to tell you they are financially secure and better off, you can do a lot, provided you want to do. <laughs> Finally, comes to, you would, you would hear this number of times, but without that I can't end up. Self-belief is the most important thing in all of you. Believe in yourself. Not somebody telling you you are good. No. You have to feel you are good. 
And in that, have confidence and conviction in whatever you do. If you believe in yourself and have conviction in what you do, God willing, everything is possible in this world. Everything, provided you are honest, humble and true to yourself. That is how that famous saying, God help those who help themselves. If you help yourself, God will help you. Finally, real growth and happiness in you will come when you discover yourself, invent yourself. Who am I? What am I? And how I am going to achieve my dreams. Dream big and you will be able to achieve your dream. And you will succeed in whatever you do. God bless. Thank you.